I just want to say, uh, um, well, first of all, uh, welcome to another edition of Intelligent Wrestling Talk. This is uh, part two of Triple H, bow down to the bow down to the myth. And today we're going to be talking about um, Triple H burying um, the talent. Now, uh, I know I had a viewer, and I do. Uh, I'm very, I'm very apologetic that um, I happened to. Um, cut off, but because for editing reasons of um, this particular uh, episode, I, I, I'm kind of, um, you know, um, you know, so that it doesn't go on too long, etc., etc. Et um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, cutting it into three parts. So I'm going to stop after um, each section. So um, I'm going to go on to uh, the next. Bit. Um, as you saw from the title, this bit is uh, titled uh, The King of Burials. Now, I'll be the first to admit that um, burial is a term used far too often by the IWC and or YWC. Um, it's not simply beating someone clean, one, two, three, or even dominating a feud with them. Um, that is not necessarily a burial. I'll give an example. A great example is one of my favorite feuds. Um, with uh, Undertaker and um, Kurt Angle. Now, some claim that uh, you know the Undertaker kind of buried Kurt Angle uh, at this point in his career, but I don't really see it like that. But it was his first ever feud with the Undertaker, um, where you know he pissed off the Undertaker and he was trying to get out of fighting him, and he was playing a chicken shit heel. And he played it very, very well. And, um, you know, the match between uh, Undertaker and Kurt Angle was pretty much a squash match. Um, but nonetheless, even with how he squashed him in that match, um, the way the whole feud was put together, it would have been really unsatisfying for an Undertaker or a Kurt Angle fan um, to have come out of that you uh, with him not being squashed in that way. I fully expected it and I enjoyed it. I found it was funny. Um, and I think they knew that was the way to elevate, uh, you know, um, to elevate um, Kurt Angle to a next level as a chicken shit heel. He had to be squashed by the Undertaker and he did it in an amusing and entertaining way. So even though, uh, you know, that whole feud, um, you know, uh, Undertaker was made to look very strong and Kurt Angle was made to look like a chicken shit heel, um, he came out the better for it in terms of he entertained the fans. Um, the same can go with, um, well, you know, there's there's many there's many uh, different feuds that you can um, talk about, but um, you know, that's just my example anyway. So, um, I'm, I I want to clarify what is meant by burying someone. Really, as I said, it's not dominating the feud. It's not just beating someone clean for the one, two, three. For me, it is effectively, in my opinion, stunting or ending someone's career. Let me repeat, stunting or ending someone's career, whether in the wrestling ring or using backstage clout to ruin their momentum. Now, our friend Paul Levesque has been um, has taken this uh, to a whole new art form. So that I will need new ways to describe his bearing. His, his is to primarily bury momentum, history, the legacy of greats so as to look superior to them, and with hot younger talent or those who somehow threaten his position but have no power, Triple H will tend to set a bar which no one can rise over, lest their um, very like livelihood be compromised. And that bar is beating Triple H. This is why I am always so shocked by those who defend him, because he's done such a terrible job at covering his tracks when it comes to this. 
I mean, the guy makes the likes of the C John Cena and Hulk Hogan look like the Brooklyn Brawlers of putting people over in comparison with his career. Now, I truly believe um, the beef that uh, a lot have with Triple H is that he was the top performer in a time period when the wrestling business was declining, and still is declining, by the way. During this time, it was extra important to put over young and or upper mid-card guys. For example, the splitting of the roster into two brands was supposed to make it easier to create new stars on the same level as Stone Cold or Triple H. But top guys like Triple H and Mr. Kiss My Ass Vince continued to bury people because uh, most wrestlers did not fit the exact prototype that Vince or Triple H had in mind. Now, in my heart of hearts, I do believe that Vince McMahon really does believe that these muscular, um, kind of strong, uh, strong men uh, style um, looking guys from the, uh, you know, uh, from the golden era and stuff like that, and the 1950s. Are, are the guys who he really goes after, and he's the one, they're the ones that he really believes um, draw. Um, however, I don't think Triple H is under this impression. I think Triple H knows full well that that is nonsense. What Triple H cares about is making sure that no one ever eclipses his position as whatever legend. He, he, he is kind of um, making out for himself to be the legacy that he's portraying uh, and, and constantly trying to convince the world of. So, um, in, in that, I think that it's clear that he has used his position, therefore, to, to um, cock block guys who are on their way up. This inability, this inability to put stars over and to think outside the box when it comes to the main event talent has helped hasten the decline of pro, the pro wrestling or wrestling business. And, you know, a lot of that is to do with Triple H, not allowing people to go over him. So it seems the reason why the very mention of Triple H's name makes fans like myself so angry is that his continual burying of wrestling represents an antiquated hierarchical system of talent. Top stars too afraid of losing the grandeur of their top spot and a boss that has a very narrow defining of a main event wrestler. So to me the question is not if Triple H buried uh, wrestlers at a rate higher than other top stars across the history of wrestling. Rather, I believe the question is why did Triple H and Vince keep burying wrestlers in a time period that so desperately needed new top level stars? Um, you know, it was infuriating to see uh, the likes of RBD and Booker T and CM Punk and Jericho's fall at the wayside um, because um, of Triple H interfering in their career. Um, and furthermore, you know, when he became the face of Raw in two, you know, in 2002, and Brock and um, Kurt were kind of the face of SmackDown. Um, you know, during that whole period, uh, of, you know, his reign as a terror, some call it. Um, you know, ratings started dwindling, and they started dipping, and they started going down. And um, the funny uh, thing is, you know, is as much as you want to say about people like Hulk Hogan and how they bury people or how they politics stay at top, the one thing that I will never forgive um, Hulk Hogan for is Macho Man. The reason being because Macho Man wanted to be on top, and they had a great chemistry together, and it could have. Um, they could have used that to formulate a great, great storyline, um, you know, so that Hulk Hogan and Macho Man or Andy Savage really should have been the Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rock um, feud of um, the Rock and Wrestling era. But nonetheless, 
Hulk Hogan was so successful as a face of the company that even those underneath him became household names. To be in Hulk Hogan's shadow is a much, much better place than to be in Triple H's shadow, I assure you, or John Cena's for that matter. Um, you know, and in, so to me, as I said, the question is not uh, uh, if Triple H, uh, as a wrestler, buried um, uh, buried wrestlers at a higher rate than top stars across the history of wrestling. As I said, I believe it's the question of why Triple H was burying wrestlers in the time period that so desperately needs top level stars. I believe, uh, you know, the same issue uh, today with John Cena and The Rock. Uh, why not someone new? Uh, why not a new look? But hey, CM Punk and D. Bryan are getting shots at the top, and Triple H still has the chance to prove how good he is at running the show backstage. However, he just doesn't seem to want to catch up. He's refusing to adapt, uh, refusing to learn from his mistakes, continually repeating them because his ego is more important to him than the business. And that's a terrible thing for a guy who is likely to take over and become the patriarch, as such, of the wrestling industry. Um, you know, CM Punk and Dee Bryan once again are falling victim um, in, in their pushes to Triple H. God forbid that Daniel Bryan faces Triple H at, um, at WrestleMania. And if he does, one can only hope that Triple H is finally, after what happened to CM Punk, learnt from his mistakes. And it would be willing to put over, um, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan. And remember, you know, for all the bad people want to say about, um, you know, about uh, John Cena, um, he did, after all, put over CM Punk twice, only for Triple H to come along and um, beat uh, CM Punk, making him look weak. I don't know which one came first, but um, one should take that into account. Now let's look at the history of Triple H with younger or up-and-coming talent. During his reign of terror, starting in 2000, reaching its peaks in 2002, and then moving on to the PG era. Um, forgive me if some um, are repeated, uh, because there are different elements um, that come together about this. He buried Rob Van Dam. Supposedly his momentum was um, uh, his uh, momentum being um, stalled uh, was the fault of Rob Van, uh, Van Dam due to his failure of the um, of the wellness policy. But it's famously known that Rob Van Dam uh, was smoking weed and was found out by um, by uh, you know through um, testing. Um, by the wellness policy of the WWE. He was soon released. Um, now, some may say, yeah, well, that makes it Rob Van Dam's fault. He shouldn't have been uh, doing drugs. Well, let's look at R Randy Orton, um, uh, who's had several brushes with the wellness policy, not over weed, uh, well, over weed, but also of a for anabolic steroids. Uh, and it shows that having friends in the right places can overcome such minor infractions. Um, Scott Steiner, although I'm uh, grateful for that one, but he buried Scott Steiner. MVP, Shelton Benjamin, the Spirit Squad. Shelton Benjamin um, was put over clean three times, people like to put, but on the biggest stage of them all, buried. Um, he, he also didn't come off looking in, extremely strong in any of his matches against uh, 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 Triple H that much. So famously in 2000, um, and this is another thing by Triple H, famously in 2000 he claimed um, Olympic gold medalist uh, Kurt Angle was too small to be champion and only good enough for the mid-card. 
Now, that is a statement, a crazy statement, if I've ever heard one. Um, but I'll get back to that when I deal with, um, with the legend section of um, his burials. Um, Triple H also buried Carlito extremely badly, even to the point that people couldn't even see the, uh, uh, the supposed feud between them to be anything worth noting. It's most noticeable um, how badly Triple H destroyed Carlito in the Triple H versus Vince McMahon and Carlito match. As after the match ended, Triple H literally uh, just beat up on Carlito, destroyed Carlito. Um, it had no uh, purpose whatsoever. It didn't further the story. Nothing was achieved by it. It was even to the point that fans didn't even react to it. Triple H also destroyed Brian Kendrick and Paul London. It was already bad enough that Triple H defeated strong tag team champions in Trevor Murdoch and Lance Cade, but then to also destroy two people that were supposed to be assisting him when he was getting attacked boggles my freaking noggin. Boggles my mind. In 2002-2004, during his reign as face of Raw, he ruthlessly buried um, RVD, as I said before, Kane, Scott, Scott Steiner, and Booker T. Their WWE career uh, went, um, you know, with Scott Steiner really went nowhere. Um, but with RVD and Booker T, they just became legends, but who just weren't on the same level as Triple H. Um, Kane the same. Uh, the WWE career went, uh, sorry, it also took so long for RVD and Booker T to recover from this ruthless burial. In fact, uh, they won their first uh, world titles in WWE in 2006 after um, their matches with him in 2002. I gave him credit uh, for putting over Goldberg and Chris Benoit to a certain extent, but I'll go back to Goldberg later. Um, inevitably, he got... Um, inevitably, but you know, inevitably, even after putting uh, Chris Benoit over, he ended up winning the World Heavyweight Championship anyway. Sorry, I just had a bit of a mistake in my notes. I also uh, give him credit for putting over Batista in 2005, but again, that's one of his buddies. Uh, so he, he put him over really, really strong in three matches. In 2007 to 2008, he, uh, he, did, he started doing these uh, things again. He buried King Booker at Summer of Slam of 2007 by squashing him. Um, King Booker uh, would lose a lot of credibility and get fired a few months later on having to go to TNA. Um, also, Carlito, Triple H, also, well, we already know about Carlito and how he squashed him. Um, you know, uh, getting him fired. I just wanted to go over the times where he's got people released. Uh, later, Triple H would bury Imago, beating him every time he met and made him look human. So WWE built up Imago for one year just for Triple H to destroy him with ease. Imago never recovered either. Mr. Kennedy, the Kennedy, um, a guy, a perfect example of being buried, uh, you may ask, how do I know Triple H had anything to do with burying him? Uh, well, ask Kennedy. Uh, you can look him up on uh, YouTube or go read what he has to say about when he was let go from the company. He would later win um, in this reign of terror his 12th world title in 2008. Uh, <laughs> this is from 2002, this reign of terror lasted, and winning every pay-per-view for seven months. He buried Randy Orton by beating him every time. Later, he would head to SmackDown and buried everyone there. He squashed MVP, Chavo Guerrero, Kenny um, Dijkstra, and Matt Hardy, who all got released eventually. He also buried the great Carly. Now, some may say uh, some of these guys deserve this, because God knows the great Carly should have been fired a very long time ago. However, let's take a closer inspection and look at Triple H's feud with Booker T. I don't think this is one uh, where Booker T deserves to be buried or to, to, to you know, come off looking weak. Triple H finally books himself in a feud with a guy who can hold up 
his end of the promos, and what does he focus on? The fact that Booker T is black. Triple H played the race card. Stunt had really gotten behind the Booker man after months of solid matches um, uh, and um, camp-tastic skits with Goldust. Uh, he, was a, he was great. You know, he was a charismatic guy. Um, people liked it. Book won a battle royal on Raw to earn the WrestleMania title shot, eliminating no less than The Rock to start his road to WrestleMania. The Rock again, really trying to, you know, The Rock is the exact opposite of Triple H, trying to put over new talent, you know. Um, he wanted to lose to Booker T, but uh, in the end, um, he, he decided not to because he knew Triple H was going to come back and just end up beating him. Um, as soon as he got, uh, you know, a sniff that Triple H was, um, you know, had his eyes locked on a feud with uh, Booker T. Um, now, again, uh, The Rock did the best he could for Booker T by allowing him to, be, uh, to eliminate him and, uh, you know, giving him a, an applause and getting the crowd behind him, even though he was a heel at the time. So let's go on to you know the the, the feud itself. Everything was going great until um, Book's first angle, as I said, the Triple H. Triple H triumphantly would claim, um, "People like you, you like you exist only to entertain me," and did such great WrestleMania level angles as attempting to kick Booker T upon encountering him in a men's room. He attempted to book uh, to to tip Booker T upon encountering him in a men's room. Not enough for you? Well, they trotted out uh, the mugshot of a young booker who um, legit did time for robbing a Wendy in his misspent youth. Calling attention to booker, Booker's legit criminal past buried the guy too. This is what I'm talking about. Triple H had found a new art form of burying people on all different levels. Now, I'm not condoning armed robbery, but the guy paid his debt to society and worked his ass off to better himself, both in his personal and professional life. Added to that, Booker T is not the first convict in wrestling, and I'm sure Triple H has faced many um, a white man in the industry with criminal past. Why bring it up against Booker T, whose gimmick was the lovable, you know, rogue, maybe black rogue if you want to put it that way, who always had a, a spinner Rooney in his back pocket to bring a smile to the fans' faces. Um, luckily, Booker's Hall of Fame charisma survived, um, you know, Triple H's humiliating onslaught, which ended with him throwing everything at Triple H but the kitchen sink, only to be pinned after a single pedigree. You know, and let me, um, you know qualify this again with the fact that given this angle I could have understood Triple H being a prickish racist heel if the end game was that Booker T would be put over strong. Um, if one wants to compare this you can compare this with the Booker T and um, uh, you know and um, Kurt Angle angle which was far more entertaining in which Kurt Angle was um, supposedly trying to sleep with uh, Booker T's wife and called her a gutter slut. But what happens, to end the feud, um, Kurt Angle is absolutely humiliated. First he loses clean to Booker T, and then he's humiliated uh, by Booker T and his wife to finish the, 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 um, the angle. And that's when you can understand people bringing in kind of racial or, 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 or more kind of racy material into, um, you know, into uh, a wrestling angle. And that's when it works. And I understand that. I'm really not against people bringing in race or, or sexu uh, sexuality or gender into wrestling angles as long as, you know, the evil guy gets his comeuppance. That's the whole point, right? You watch a movie, the end of the movie is the evil guy gets his comeuppance. So this this actually moves on quite nicely into the segue 
um, to the WWE legends. Um, I think this is an appropriate time to me mention just how selfish Triple H is. His ego is so out of whack that clearly he believes that the only way to one-up The Rock is by beating those The Rock tirelessly worked to put over. Brock and Booker come to mind, for example. Legends like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley, and Kurt Angle have also compromised their reputations, putting over the likes of Orton, Booker T, RVD, Brock Lesnar, Jericho, um, putting them over cleanly so as to get them to the next level um, of the coming um, bigger stars. Only for Triple H to swoop in a month or so later and destroy them. Um, which, not by default, doesn't only bury uh, the people that he feuded with, but is also, um, you know, in a lot of ways, disrespectful to the legends who have put themselves out uh, to actually uh, put these guys over. Because by default, it suggests he's better than them. It's totally disrespectful, and um, you know, especially to the likes of um, someone like Mick Foley, who did so much to help Triple H become a main eventer in the first place. But Mick Foley to go down to someone like Orton, lose clean, only for Triple H to come in and sweep in and 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 completely destroy, um, you know, that whole angle. Uh, with um, Orton, just goes to show that you know Triple H doesn't have any respect for anything, anything at all, and no appreciation. Um, the next part um, we're going to be talking uh, and assessing, um, you know, uh, Triple H's. Um, I, I call it Legends of the Fall, the segment, and. It's really going to be looking at how Triple H has, uh, um, you know, used legends in various different ways to uh, to to maintain this false image of himself as in their league. 